Welcome to Beyond the Badge. Beyond the Badge is an inside look at your Oshkosh Police Department, brought to you through the resources of Oshkosh Community Media Services. Welcome to this edition of Beyond the Badge. I'm Joe Nichols. On today's show, we'll be talking with Sergeant Matt Harris, who is a Special Operations Supervisor for the City of Oshkosh Police Department, and the special events that are coming up this year. Later in the show, Chief Dean Smith will be talking with us during this month's command post. We welcome all of you watching us on City Cable 10, and those of you listening to us on 101.9 WOCT. Matt, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Yep, and I know this is getting kind of uh, old hat for you. <laughs> <laughs> every year. Yep. Every year, every year. But it's great information, yep. and thank you for coming back. For those uh, that don't know uh, of you, please tell us about yourself. Yes, I'm the Special Operations Sergeant. I'm coming up on my 13th year uh, with the department, and I've been in this uh, Special Operations role for the past six years. So um, getting to know it a little bit, getting to uh, get comfortable in it. Um, some of my job duties at the police department in special operations, I oversee the community service officers, the crossing guards, the auxiliary police, the police explorers, um, and then planning special events. So a lot of those groups that I mentioned, the CSOs, auxiliary, the explorers, are an integral part of our special events. So it's nice, nice to kind of uh, supervise all of them also. A absolutely, and a, and a special shout out to all of those groups yep. because otherwise we wouldn't be able yeah. to make it, <laughs> I tell you. <ya. laughs> So uh, the, the special operations position is busy year round. Yes. Uh, this just isn't a, a one or two events that occur throughout the year. What is considered a special event? Yeah, as you mentioned too, a lot of my colleagues think that summertime is a busy time. Actually, that's busy time for working them. Springtime, we're, we're very busy in springtime doing the planning and, and getting all the details ironed out. But you know, to your question, what is a special event? Um, sure. The city, the city ha has an ordinance that we that we use to define special events. So um, some of the things we look at are you requesting exclusive use of a facility of a parking lot of a street of an open space of a park as an example that would be uh, an example of a special event um, if you're going to uh, request closure of that public street that uh, that parking lot that public right of way if there's going to be a closure of that area um, also size of your event uh, typically if it meets some of those criteria and it's going to uh, contain over 250 people attending that event it may meet special event criteria um, if you're going to install temporary structures or uh, construct structures for your event that may uh, meet some criteria. Um, if your event is going to have uh, maybe a large group of people that are going to require special attention uh, because there's going to be rules or regulations that require some type of public safety enforcement, okay. uh, basically monitoring the laws, uh, that might be a special event. Another thing is if there's going to be extraordinary services provided. That might be police staffing, barricades, cones, no parking signs, something that goes beyond the normal day-to-day uh, -day operations of that department. Sure. If hours are going to extend beyond those within a, uh, that are allowed within the city ordinance, if you want to have your concert until midnight, that might extend it past uh, some of the allowable times within the city, depending on where you are and what day you are on. And then uh, last but not least, if there's going to be alcohol, beverages, food, merchandise offered. Sure. So sometimes a, a combination of some of those items. Sometimes uh, some of the events hit all of those items. But then we would review it to determine if it is a special event or not. Well, a lot to know. Yep. A lot to know. So uh, we're... we're Titled the uh, the event city, uh, and just checking to see how many special events are occurring. Yeah, about two hundred. Um, wow. <laughs> there's several that the police department isn't specifically involved with. You know, if there's sure. if there's no police services, it's in a small a small gathering in a park. But uh, we've kind of hovered around that two hundred number for the past several years. Um, and then to to go with that too, uh, you know, we have two hundred events, but it's not just. 200 days. Uh, some of them are three days, four days, five days events. Um, for the past four or five years, I've, I've averaged about 280 event days per year that the police department is involved with for some wow. of those multiple days. And just to throw some numbers out there, our CSOs for the past five years have averaged about 900 hours a year. Our auxiliary police, which are a completely volunteer organization, uh, 1,600 hours uh, on average they've worked on an annual basis. 
Um, our patrol officers, our supervisors, have worked about uh, 3,200 hours on average. The good majority of that is on overtime paid for by the special event organizers. So as a whole, uh, for the community service officers, the auxiliary, the officers, the supervisors, we're averaging about 5,800 hours uh, worked for special wow. events a year. Wow. That is a lot yeah. of hours, a lot of hours. Yeah. So if someone is uh, thinking about having a special event, uh, why is it important to contact you? Yeah, it's important for uh, for them and it's important for us. Um, part of it just to have, you know, we have it on our radar. Um, I know there's an event I'll, I'll mention a little later uh, coming up in September, it's a new event. Well, there's a lot of logistics that go into that. Planning, I, one of the last meetings I had talking about emergency access routes in and out. Um, but just making sure that you have all of your uh, uh, permits in, that way you can make sure as an event organizer that you're you're on the right path as you get closer to your event. Very good. And so how does one go about getting a special event? Yeah, uh, city website's probably the easiest way. Uh, upper left-hand corner, if I recall correctly, it's I want to hold a special event. And that is all the information you'll need there. Um, basically what's going to happen is you'll fill out an application. Uh, in October of 2015, the city... Uh, uh, welcome the new special events coordinator. So she would review that application, get it out to all the other departments. For example, city clerk's office, uh, if you're gonna have alcohol, city manager's office, they're gonna uh, give the final review. Planning services, if they need to look at the zoning of your event site. Public works for things like barricades and the right of way. Fire department, um, if they're gonna look at uh, safety and, and fire extinguisher and access points for your event. The health department, if you're gonna have food and sanitation issues inspections if you're going to do anything like plumbing or electrical uh, the parks department if your event is going to be in a park they're going to help you facilitate okay. that event police department which i'll mention some of our duties in a second sure. uh, transportation if it's going to involve a city parking lot the bus routes might need to be rerouted and then risk management for any insurance requirements that the city would have so the sooner that you can get your special event application in the sooner we can contact all those departments absolutely and you mentioned police action yep. what what's entailed for the police to get ready for an event yeah, a lot of the things that i look at um you know if we're going to have uh, a route a 5k route well, we want to meet with public works to see if there's any construction that we need to reroute that uh, that 5k route um, the notifications to the neighborhood especially if it's a 5k or, or, or a marathon or something like that notifying the residents along the route that this is going to be going on <coughs> um, staffing police staffing especially for our larger summer events that's something that we need to plan ahead for schedule um, so that you can be guaranteed that you're gonna have police officers at your event mm -hmm. um, barricades signs we need to make sure those are requested and delivered make sure we have them at the right locations setting up detours if your event cover uh, is on a state public highway um, getting the cones and no parking signs set out and then uh, uh, things like bus routes might need to be rerouted and then also we work closely with the fire department for any uh, medical uh, fire that need to be on site also. Very good, very good. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about uh, Country USA and uh, Rock USA, the uh, Ford Festival uh, grounds. Uh, we talk about that and you've made some great improvements over the last couple of years to uh, protect pedestrians. What are some of those things that yep. we've done? Yeah, I've been in my position for six years now and uh, have experienced those events for, you know, five times coming up on my sixth year and trying to, to tweak something every year, trying to learn. We work with uh, um, the, the Sheriff's Department, we work with State Patrol, work with the event organizer, work with the Highway Department, the Wisconsin DOT, the City Transportation, so a lot of different entities. But things we've done is we've lowered the speed limit uh, from 45 to 25. There's advanced notification, and then there's enforcement action taken out there. We put up some speed display boards, uh, digital message boards out in that area to, to just slow everything down in that area. Um, we've had increased lighting. The event organizer has provided lighting along the, the corridor of Washburn Street. Uh, we've also uh, added some drop-off pickup points, some drop-off areas at the main entrance, and then some pickup points over on uh, Ripple uh, by, I believe it's gates one and two. So if you want to pick somebody up at the end of the night, there's actually a lane that you can stop in, have the person get in. Uh, that way they're not walking out on Washburn. They can leave the concert venue at gate one and two and move right to where the pickup spot is. And then we also have officers out there uh, directing traffic, but also on patrol. I know the uh, state patrol uh, works that area a lot. Um, OWI patrols and just uh, monitoring for pedestrian safety. Very good and excellent improvements, uh, may Thank I you. say myself, Thank absolutely. You. So 2016, uh, the events just keep, continue <laughs> to keep on coming and we're gonna see in a graphic here real soon some of these special events taking place. So can, can you kind of go through with us some of the events that are coming up beginning in March? Yeah, beginning in March, a um, couple of them that we have are the Shamrock Shuffle, that is a, a 5K that UW Oshkosh puts on, about 1,000 to 1,500 people, kind of 
kind of kicks off some of the 5K season. Uh, we also have the St. Patrick's Day Parade and Party. That's been going on for a couple of years in downtown Oshkosh. Um, parade, I believe, this year starts a little earlier, uh, but it's going to start at the Main and CP area and go north on Main Street. Okay. Um, in April of 2016, the Oshkosh Marathon and Half Marathon, I believe uh, last year was the first year they added a marathon element to it. Thankfully, a lot of that was out on uh, the Weawash Trail, so okay. it doesn't need to be staffed. But um, but it does add some uh, some differing challenges as a, from a staffing role because it's an increased time that people are going to be on the route. But that's uh, in April. That's uh, usually about two to three thousand people run away to the bay and NAMI suicide awareness walk around the same day. So that's one of those challenges that we have from sure. a police department. They're a little different times, but we're able to go from one event to the other, um, and those events are uh, run-walk events. Okay. Uh, right. Getting into the, uh, hopefully the nicer weather in May, Oshkosh Bird Fest, I believe that Oshkosh is Wisconsin's event city. That's one of those events that uh, specifically the police department doesn't get involved in, but at Menominee Park, uh, there's some bird activities, bird viewing that goes on there. Uh, we get into the Payne Festival of Spring at the Payne Arts Center, um, right in the corner there of Algoma and Congress. Um, I know our auxiliary police helps us with that event just for traffic direction and vendor uh, placement there. Sure. Um, the, the Memorial Mung Festival, that's coming up Memorial Weekend. That event has, uh, we ha haven't seen that event for both the past two years, but the Mung Service Center is bringing that event back. I just had some contacts recently with the organizer, so that is, that is on schedule. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade is on Memorial Day, the same route going right down Algoma uh, okay. through the Yubi Oshkosh area. Uh, in June, the farmer's market starts, uh, the first uh, kind of official summer weekend, June 4th. Uh, that goes for 22 dates. So I know from our, our patrol officers try to get down there a lot and just have some positive citizen contacts and just you know keeping an eye on that uh, nice downtown venue. Thunder in the Park, is that's a South Park event. Um, that's going to be, uh, I think they took off in 2015, so they're going to be back this year. Um, okay. uh, motorcycle show. Uh, right. Irish Fest is at the Leech Amphitheater. That event uh, is going to be a Saturday, Sunday this year. So they, they cut a day or two off of that, but uh, Saturday night should be a big night for that event. Okay. And there also is a 5K on Saturday morning. Okay, great. The Winnebago Land Art Fair, um, that is going to be uh, in South Park. I, I want to say that's like their 50 or 60th year, so they've been around for a long time wow. at that venue. Pretty big art show in the park. Been there, yes. <laughs> yep, yep. 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 It's a pretty good time. Yes. Uh, Water Fest, I don't know any of the acts yet, but I, I typically meet with uh, the organizers in, uh, in early spring to, to kind of plan out some of the event dates. But as far as I know, those are going to be on Thursdays, June through August. They might have a Friday night event date also, too, just depending on their scheduling. Very and good. then we get into some of the big, big events. Country USA, uh, they are a week earlier this year. Uh, June 14th to the 18th out at Ford Festival Grounds. Okay. Um, should be a pretty big year. I think uh, Luke Bryan is probably their big name this year. Uh, we get into July then. July, I don't uh, I don't leave the police department very much. Uh, Sawdust yeah. Days, <laughs> June 30th to July 4th, uh, culminating there with the fireworks on uh, July 4th and the parade on the morning of the July 4th. Okay. Um, same same route we're returning to going down Main Street back in 2015. There was a conflict uh, with Farmer's Market date, so we had to modify that, but it's going to go down Main Street. Okay. Um, Life Fest, July 7th to the 10th out at the county fairgrounds. Uh, that's uh, four, four or five days out there of, uh, um, of music. Rock USA is July 14th to 16th. The change is that they had been four days. They're going to be three days now, and I think they just released their schedule um, February or March. Okay. Uh, EAA Air Venture. Uh, that's the last week in July, and I know uh, um, their their big thing for this year is going to be the Canadian Forces Snowbirds are going to do some displays on the final weekend, so that should be a big draw. Well, that's great. Uh, we haven't seen them there. in quite a while. Yeah, I think it was yeah. 30 years or something that's been, they've wow. been here. So. Wow. Uh, we get into August, so things start slowing a little bit down for me, so I get a little breather. But uh, Neighborhood Night Out, August 2nd, those are at uh, community events all throughout the community. Race the Lake, uh, this is uh, about a 90-mile bike race that starts in Fond du Lac and travels all the way around Lake Winnebago, so about 2,000 cyclists come through the city in different waves. Uh, Gus Macker Basketball Tournament, they've kind of settled uh, on an August date now. They had been in June a couple years ago, but they've been August for a while. Downtown Oshkosh, that's a very positive event for some of those businesses down there and sure. just for people to see uh, downtown. September, uh, Rib Fest. This is a brand new event. I think some of the rotary groups in town are putting this on. It will be in Menominee Park. Um, okay. And my understanding is they're going to have a big barbecue festival there. So Fantastic. we're in the planning stages right now for that. So <laughs> put that on your calendar. Uh, music and food, basically, it'll be offering. Excellent. Um, September also has the uh, Labor Day weekend has the Lao Mung Festival. That event, uh, just with the memorial one, had uh, taken a couple years off. They're going to be back this year, as far as I understand. So that'll Very be good. up at County Park. And then in October, uh, Oktoberfest, uh, they uh, are going to also have a Beer 2K that uses the Riverwalk. 
um, Take Back the Night. Uh, that is usually one of the first or second weeks in October. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be at UW Oshkosh. The Tour to Titan, uh, that is a kind of a UW Oshkosh homecoming weekend uh, bike ride. I, I actually did it last year with them. It goes over the Heritage Trail over Highway 41. Kind of a nice bike nice. ride. Nice. Um, the Halloween Trick or Treating, uh, October 31st in the city. Uh, so get out there and get some treats. And then we get into November and December, uh, kind of slows down a little bit for me, which is nice. But the holiday parade is a Thursday night in November, the date's to be determined. Uh, the turkey trot is always Thanksgiving morning, several thousand people Thanksgiving morning uh, have a run walk. And then in December, we always have the Race for the Light, a Christine Ann uh, domestic abuse shelter uh, fundraiser. That's usually on a Saturday evening in December. They run through Menominee Park where all the lights are. Fantastic. Oh, that's a lot of events, and that's not even all of them. Yeah. So, yes, yes. Wow. <laughs> so uh, if somebody wanted to view these uh, uh, events online, where, where could they go? Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, there's about 200 of them. Uh, if they go to the City of Oshkosh website, on the left-hand side, there's a tab that says, I want to okay. hold a special event. You click on that, and then it brings up the calendar. Uh, you can view previous months. You can go forward um, and see what's coming up. Fantastic. And so uh, do you have any special tips on if somebody's planning an event, what they should do, and, and how, go, how do they go about Plan it? Plan ahead. Um, you can submit a special event application at least a year in advance, so no more than a year in advance, and it has to be done no later than 45 days in advance, so about a month and a half. But if you know your event's coming up, plan ahead, contact either myself or contact the special events coordinator. We can, you know, we can help you get the answers. So you don't have to go searching to all these other uh, departments. We'll help you get those answers. You'll be invited to uh, a meeting of the special events review committee where a representative from every department will be there to help you. Fantastic. Matt, thank you so much for being on today's show and talking with us about this year's special events. And we'll be right back after this short break. I'm City Manager Mark Roloff. Roundabouts are new to many of us in Oshkosh, so we have to take extra precaution when using them. Remember, safety is the key. Slow down. The speed limit in the roundabout is only 15 miles an hour. Avoid distractions. Focus all your attention on navigating the roundabout. Find the proper lane. Check out the signage leading up to the roundabout. Choose your lane assignment early and stay in your lane. Evaluate the situation. Take notice of what kind of vehicles are in front of you. Sometimes larger trucks need to take up both lanes of a roundabout. Think to look for pedestrians and allow them to cross when entering and exiting a roundabout. Yield to traffic on your left. You must yield to all traffic in the roundabout and that traffic will be coming from your left. Again, safety is the key. Remember that word and what those letters represent and your roundabout driving experience will be a smooth one. Thanks for your support. Welcome back to Beyond the Badge. We now send it over to Chief Dean Smith in this month's segment of the Command Post. Well, I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia and started my career in law enforcement in North Augusta, South Carolina. I was there for about eight months and then from there I uh, felt like I needed to move back to Virginia. And in doing so, uh, began working for the city of Suffolk, Virginia and I worked there for 26 and a half years. Uh, during my time there, I worked uh, through all ranks of the department. Uh, I was the commander of all divisions within the police department and ultimately left there as a deputy chief of police. Came to Oshkosh because, uh, frankly, when it came to a point in my career that uh, I wanted to take the next step in that career, which was to become a chief of police, uh, I wanted to find a good police department. I wanted to find a good community as well. There's a lot of chief's jobs out there. However, there's not a lot of good chief's jobs out there. So when, as I started looking around at departments, I wanted to find a department that was uh, in tune with its community, and its community was very supportive of the police department. It didn't hurt that Oshkosh was accredited uh, through CALEA, uh, as, as well as Wisconsin accreditation. And it was important to me that the department was following its rules and standards um, as it relates to CALEA. So it became a very attractive department. One of the things as an outsider looking in, because that's what I was, uh, I wanted to see how they 
how the department looked within the community in the media. And really, frankly, there wasn't a whole lot of stories that negatively impacted the community, which made this a very attractive place to come through, come to. In addition, I also have I also have a sister that lives here in Wisconsin, and she hasn't had family around here in probably in 20 years. So it was a good opportunity to reconnect with her. Well, as you can imagine, I've been very busy over the last couple of months. I've been meeting uh, externally with uh, members of the community, both in civic organizations, business uh, contacts, as well as individuals one-on-one. -on -one. I've also been meeting individually with all my supervisors internally, uh, as well as officers and, and civilian staff of the department, because I really wanted to get a full climate of how the department uh, was, was functioning and try to determine those, those areas that we should be concentrating on as a, as a police department. You know, I, I strongly believe that Oshkosh is a, is a good community. It's a strong community that truly believes in, in community policing and it believes in its police department. And by paying attention to those things, I've been able to uh, really learn a lot about the community over the last couple of months. And, you know, it's frankly exciting to be here. So I've, I've been very busy over the last couple of months. But I wake up every day with a smile on my face, knowing that I have the opportunity to come here and, and hopefully do some good work. Well, by June of this year, we're going to have full deployment of body cameras to all of our uniform patrol officers. I also foresee us building on the relationships that have been established here within the community. I'm also going to be focusing the efforts of the department on crime fighting. I strongly believe that we, as a police department, need to focus on solving crime, on preventing crime here within the community. That's our job, we're crime fighters. And that's the message that I'm delivering to our officers. Through our partnership with the community and being able to reach out to our community leaders and our community members, we should be able to build on, on those relationships and hopefully do a, do a very good job of solving crimes here within the community. I'm also working on identifying specific needs that the department uh, can use to enhance our crime fighting abilities. I believe strongly that we can work smarter and not harder. We can use technology to help us in, in combating crime within the, within the community. We're also going to be working to hopefully diversify the department. Uh, I feel strongly that we should have a strong applicant pool of, of minority applicants so that we can look and find the smartest, the brightest, and the, the, the best officers we possibly can for the department but be reflective of our community so that we can represent everybody fairly within the community. We'll also be re-implementing our Citizens Police Academy and also our Coffee with a Cop program. This is an opportunity for the citizens to see what we do as police officers and also to interact directly one-on-one -on -one with our officers. Well, the department will be working on our strategic plan in the coming year, which will map out our, our, our three to five year plan. This will be developed with input from community members and stakeholders, which is going to help us help guide us where we're going to be heading at in the future. Internally, we need to build our staff through training to ensure that we provide the most professional police department that we possibly can. Succession planning is important for any organization. And I've just received information just this week that indicates as far as city staff goes, nearly 50% of the staff that work for the city, the city of Oshkosh right now will be eligible to retire within the next 10 years. That's an incredible number. And it, and it says volumes for where we will be at in three to five years as it relates to our staff. We're gonna have a lot of young police officers out there. So we need to do a good job of, of training those officers and giving them the, them the tools that they need so they can do their job successfully. Certainly the dialogue that is in the mainstream media across the country is not the dialogue that, that I believe we have here within the city of Oshkosh as it relates to police officers. I believe that there's a that there's a strong support for our police department and our officers believe strongly in the community and building, building those community ties here. I believe strongly that as a police department, we, we have to fight crime. That's our job as crime fighters. Working together as a community, we should be doing those things that we need to do in order to combat crime within the city of Oshkosh. The national storyline is not the storyline here in Oshkosh, and that's important for our officers and our citizens to all realize. We're not that police department. So I think that it's very important that we maintain those relationships and we continue to grow those relationships so that we, we keep Oshkosh Oshkosh. We don't change anything here as it relates to our relationships with the community. It goes without saying that there's a need for transparency within law enforcement as a whole. 
And I think that our body camera program will, will certainly address that here in Oshkosh. Well, I expect that the community is going to continue to support the Oshkosh Police Department. Uh, there's no reason to, to, to tell me that, that they're not going to do that. But with that support comes a responsibility uh, to us that we do everything we can to support the community as well. Uh, I don't take that, that responsibility lightly. I think that that's a daily effort that we have to do as a police department. We have to foster the relationships within the community. We have to be... We have to be that police department when you call us at the, at, in the middle of the night for help that you're calling and you're expecting that we're going to sol solve the crimes that are occurring and we're going to be there to help you. And that's, that's our job as a police department. We're crime fighters. So my expectation of the community is that they're going to continue to support us, but as a police department we're going to continue to do the work that's required of us in order to provide the safety and security that the community expects of us. When you approach a stopped emergency, maintenance, or towing vehicle with its emergency lights flashing, move over. Or, if you're unable to change lanes, slow down. It's the law in Wisconsin. We thank Chief Dean Smith and Sergeant Matt Harris for being on today's show. If you have questions about special events, please go to the website at oshkoshpd.com or the city's website. We thank you for watching and listening to today's show. If you missed the show or would like to watch it again, you can go to oshkoshcommunitymedia.org and watch the show over. A reminder that as the weather warms, more people, especially children, will be out and about walking or riding their bicycles. Please drive safely. Make sure that you slow down if you see someone attempting to cross the street or if you're passing a bicyclist on the roadway. Remember that we all need to share the road safely. A reminder also to the pet owners, uh, in city parks, it's prohibited from you uh, from having a pet out in the park. Uh, remember also that if you're walking your dog, the dog has to be on a leash six feet or less in length. Otherwise, you couldn't get a citation for it. Uh, also, you got to remember to clean up after your pet. If you do have your pet that is missing, uh, you can contact the Oshkosh Police Department or you can contact the Oshkosh Humane Society to see if the pet can be located. Until next, the next edition of Beyond the Badge, we wish you all a great day and stay safe.